Hey, good morning. So this is the Word of Life Quiet Time that we've been doing in youth group. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be reading it. I'm going to read the section. I'm reading from the ESV. And then I'm going to give some minor commentary because I want you guys to do the work. So I am on week 35, and this is Friday. And we're in 2 Corinthians 4, chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. And it says, Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For what we proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. Now, in the Word of Life Quiet Time, it has two questions after you read the section of Scripture. It says, what is the writer saying? And then how can I apply this to my life? Well, the first question, what is the writer saying? You simply go to what you just read and what is the writer saying? So the writer, Paul is saying because of this ministry, because of the mercy of God, we don't lose heart. We don't lose hope. We have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. The Spirit of God has changed us and, and made us new, made us different. We don't want to convince. We don't want to trap people into accepting the gospel. We want to have them know the gospel. And the only reason that people don't understand the gospel is because of the evilness in their heart, because the enemy has blinded their hearts. They can't understand it without the work of the Holy Spirit. And then verse 7 finishes it. We have this treasure in jars of clay, talking about our, our frail human bodies, because we are going to fail. We, we do fall short so much. But God still uses us to show his power, to show the Spirit of God in this world. So that's what the writer is saying. And you can take the second question and how can I apply this to my life? You can take and apply what Paul is saying to your own personal life. Now I'm going to read the commentary. These verses are part of a larger section, verse chapter 2, 14 through chapter 7, 15, which forms a break in Paul's account of the difficulties he had been experiencing throughout he is seeking to explain what keeps him going in spite of tough circumstances. Chapter 3, verse 12. Chapter 4, verse 1. Chapters 8, or in verses 8 through 9, and then 16. While providing a defense of his ministry to those who were questioning its authenticity. First of all, he was very much aware that God hadn't given him the ministry he had because he'd earned it. That kept him from losing heart. When we believe the lie that God will only use us when we deserve it, discouragement is inevitable. Ministry is a merciful gift, not an earned privilege. Secondly, Paul knew that his responsibility was to simply proclaim the word of God and to preach Christ. It wasn't to force people to change. When we believe the lie that it's our job to change people, it won't be long before we distort the message and try to manipulate and coerce them Many false teachers were doing just that. Many still do. What a relief to realize that our task is to clearly hold up the truth in front of people's conscience so that the Holy Spirit can bring conviction. You can always count on the fact that the most hardened person still has a God-given conscience that may respond to truth as the Spirit prompts them. Finally, Paul was always mindful of the fact that he was never that he was and never would be more than a jar of clay that God could use to manifest his excellent power. 
When we believe the lie that we're something more than that, it won't be long before we lose heart because jars can't produce anything. They can only hold what someone else produces. And then at the bottom of the diary, it has this life step. It says, take a hard look at what you believe about yourself as a servant of the Lord. Do you feel unworthy, unconvincing, and weak? You are correct on all three accounts. That's why Christ has taken your place and is now all you could never be. He is worthy, convincing, and powerful. Ask God to teach you to consciously shift your dependence from yourself to him. I want to close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, your, your word calls us jars of clay, and it's only what you put into us that can come out. And, and Father, I pray for those watching that, that you would be pouring into them your Holy Spirit, that their lives would be changing, that your spirit would be moving and, and removing the bad and putting in the good, that they would seek to know you better, that they would want to know you more, that they would want a better relationship with you. And Lord, if there's somebody watching this that doesn't have a relationship with you, that that they would see that the gospel doesn't make sense and that they would want your spirit to come into them and help it make sense, that they would want to know you as both Lord and Savior and know that you are the one that makes all things possible. Father, I thank you once again for this time and thank you so much for your word. And I pray these things in your name. Amen.